please welcome How Factory, presenting our Trace Stefan and Nicole Forsythe. It all started 35,000 years ago when a primitive process engineer drew up the first standard operating procedure, how to kill a mammoth. And then, in 1886, the three-ring binder was invented. And finally, in 1984, Microsoft released Word. And before long, someone in a factory combined all three of these technologies to create the standard operating procedure in a binder. <laughs> and it's been a pain in the ass ever since. For factory workers, a binder full of standard operating procedures is their Bible. But does this look like a great place to keep critical knowledge? Binders get lost, outdated, and they're a terrible way to communicate and train. 25% of the manufacturing workforce is retiring in the next 10 years, and companies are at risk of losing this know-how. And when workers don't know how to do their jobs correctly, you end up with product failures, recalls, and injury. I'm Trace, and after decades of experience, my co-founders, Kenny, Nicole, and I have found a better way. It's called How Factory. We're revolutionizing how you create, use, and update standard operating procedures, work instructions, and training. We're making it simple. Let's look at How Factory in a demo with David. David works for the Center of Manufacturing Excellence and trains workers. He just got a new delivery of CNC machines and needs to get his team up to speed in a hurry. He logs on to the How Factory web app and he sees a list of his corporate processes. He can easily create a new one. He enters some metadata about the process, like the department and the product line. And then he can also make one of his experts the process owner so they can approve changes. He chooses a layout and starts entering steps. When David uploads a photo, it's optimized for him in an instant. And How Factory makes it incredibly easy to add video and other assets like schematics, blueprints. But in How Factory's full suite of collaboration tools, the most powerful feature lets workers suggest changes. Frontline people share their know-how, they alert David when there's a problem, and they make improvements. To assign work, you simply choose either a workstation or you assign to specific people. It's all just really simple. But How Factory doesn't stop there. In manufacturing, third-party vendors supply machinery, parts, lubricants, you name it. So when David gets new equipment in, he can simply import the operating instructions right from the manufacturer. How Factory keeps David's critical knowledge up to date and distributed across his entire company in an instant. And it's easy to get started. Our monthly subscription pricing makes it so that manufacturers of any size can use How Factory. Our go-to-market plans are $250 and $500 per month per site. In addition, we're building a revenue sharing program for the hundreds of third parties that are already selling inside of manufacturing. There are 150,000 small to medium-sized manufacturers in the United States with fewer than 500 employees. Now, these companies 
spend $4 billion a year on compliance, rework, and training. Now we've got networks in the Midwest and in the Southeast. So we started there because those are the centers for manufacturing in the United States. We started four months ago with our closed pilot program and three reference customers. And our waiting list grew to 60. And starting today, you can join us. Don't let your corporate memory slip away. See the power of easily developed processes and know-how. Log on to howfactory.com slash hello and sign up today. Thank you. All right, give it up. <laughs> Judges. Um, so as someone that, um, that, that loves manufacturing and ran a factory, uh, this, this rings close to my heart. I guess, I guess my, my, my immediate sort of gut response or question, though, is, is so many factories, when you sort of like look at that, that landscape across the U.S., um, they're, they're so far behind in terms of technology and, and adopting new things, and they're slow to adopt and, and scared of, I, I think, platforms like this. So, so how do you go about acquiring them? How do you find them? Is it cost effective? And, and what does that look like? Yeah, you know, so um, a few years back, I don't think this would have been even remotely possible. The technology has just caught up with it. Smart factories five years ago were a dream. You know, but now, when we did our customer discovery, so we went through an accelerator and I'm back in Iowa, and <laughs> at this, the Iowa Startup Accelerator, and we did 170 customer discovery interviews. And in those interviews, we found that 97% of those companies actually had Wi-Fi ubiquitous throughout their facilities in our target market. So this technology is now possible as a res in, in the demand, it's uh, to how do we reach those people? It's those third party vendors, that distribution model, they, they're desperate for a solution and we're providing one for them. And then they're reaching out to people. That's how our list keeps growing. Can you talk a little bit more about that, your target market? I wasn't 100% clear. Sure. Like very specifically, yeah. factories are a kind of a big thing. Um, what kinds of factories, what size, which, where are they in their development? I'd love to understand what the addressable market really looks like for this yeah. in the near term. So manufacturing, though the numbers have shrunk in the United States, the output has actually grown. And, and, and in the Midwest and the Southeast, there are just hundreds and thousands of these small manufacturers. Some of them are tier one suppliers to the larger manufacturers, and some of them are you know, plants that just make you know, these, these products that we use every day. Well, we, we focus in on the companies with really between 100 and 500 employees. They have the resources that they need, but they're not so large. It really, it's, a, it's an underserved market. And it's companies that Kenny and I have uh, a lot of experience working with in the past because we're, we're industry experts. We've sold to them in the past that we know the networks, we, we, we understand those people. So our target market are the companies between 100 and 500 employees, and there's 150,000 of them in the United States. And when you tell them the problem that you're solving for them, like in, in one sentence, how do, you, how do you position it to them? Yeah, so we are replacing the standard tools that they use to capture their processes, which are office, it's, they typically use office products. And so from that first point of contact to a factory, like actually getting up and running on your system, what, is, what does that time frame look like? Yeah, so far it's been really, so we've been working with our reference customers where we've been learning from them, okay? So that's really us learning as much as anything else. But when we've worked with other companies that are, that are, are just onboarding, it's really, here's the software, here's a demonstration of it, here's the assets that you can add to it, start creating. It really just doesn't take us that long because the tool is designed from the ground up to be easy. But the issue I think that I see is, you know, this is kind of feels a little bit like knowledge bases back in the day, like they make so much sense, why wouldn't everybody do them? Mm -hmm. And the question really becomes, even though this is so logical, right? Like why wouldn't you streamline all your processes? You know, especially in the smaller factories, you have people who've been there for many years, a lot of them are family run operations, and you've got, this is really behavior change. And that's often really difficult. And how are you gonna solve for that? Well, one thing that's, that's very clear is that the transition between the generational transition is solving that problem for us. Because the baby boomer generation, they're the ones with that knowledge right now, and as they move out, the factories that we work with are just terrified of what that means to them from a knowledge standpoint. They're losing the expertise that they've had access to for the last 20, 30 years, and they need to bring the, the millennials on board and get them up to speed. So one of the things that's happened is the younger generation comes in, they're 
open to the new technology, the older generation really knows that they need to solve this problem. But just on that one very tactical question, do you need to get the entire factory on board for this to work, or can one, two, three, four, five people use it and have it work and then spread more organically within the, the place factory. that we start, we've gotten traction, is inside of the training departments. It's, it's the onboarding process for new employees and also the But do you need the whole training department or do you, yeah. like, meaning what I really don't know, you know, what, when there are processes in place that have been in place for a long time, you know, it's one thing if you need to get, you know, if individuals can sign up and start using it between themselves and you can have this sort of bottoms up thing versus, you know, I got to go and convince the factory owner that sometime in the next two, three, however many months, they're going to do like a big change management mm -hmm. thing and they're going to move everybody over. I'm trying to understand just that question about how you go to market. So we've actually, to, to make that as easy as possible for manufacturers to try this product out, we've made it incredibly easy for them to, to start by allowing them to have a free trial, for them to be able to get in with a simple credit card number. All of those things are designed to let one part of the, of the company try this out, work with it, and then as it grows within that company, the training area, one specific line, we have one company that's just using a product line, one company that's just using it for their ladder training, so they're for their OSHA compliance. You know, it makes it very easy for them, uh, us to prove ourselves, and then as they adopt and more and more, it gains inertia throughout that. Well, and that actually goes to the pricing model. So if you go through that, you wouldn't really do a flat fee, you would do like a seat license. You know, yeah. so that way if you're starting small with a small group and getting them to sort of become the evangelist within the organization, why wouldn't you do a seat licensing model and not do a flat fee? Or some other way to scale with usage. Yeah, the, right now the, we've, we, we did our customer discovery interviews. They said where they really like this technology as it exists today. And we want to prove that out inside of those facilities today. And then we'll take a look and see where we need to go from there. What verticals are you going to look at first in terms of manufacturing? Like, people who are in agriculture, you know, a lot of automotive, what are you thinking? Probably traditional U.S. manufacturers, not, maybe automotive, but, but really just people that are building microwaves, tractors, things like that inside of the, the company's chairs, desks, you know, those kind of things. And as far as being able to just, send, last question, but sca sca scaling this and looking at like how, how you're gonna, you're gonna go out and actually onboarding these, these, these guys, is this a Salesforce model? Is this, uh, is this a referral program? Are they coming to you? Or are you going out and finding them? You know, the traditional SaaS, the way that you, you know, market that way, but the thing that we know that I don't think a lot of people understand is this, the, how need, the need that these vendors have to be able to get their stuff to be used correctly. And so that's why they keep pushing our product, even though that we weren't really ready to put, have the product be pushed early on, they kept pushing the product. So that we think that through that revenue sharing program can be a key way for us to get into those companies. Unfortunately, we're out of time. That was Hal Factory. Thank you guys very much. Thank you.